Hey there and uh, welcome to my kitchen. Um, I thought it would be fun just to hop on and instead of writing about this verse, um, I could maybe try to give you a picture of what this verse is showing us. So the verse that I want to talk about today is John 14 20 and that verse says that on that day you will realize that I am in my father, you are in me, and I am in you. Um, let me see if I can show you using these nesting dolls what this verse is telling us about um, and then we'll talk about how that applies to us. Um, first of all, we have these nesting dolls. So the big G is God, um, J for Jesus, hot pink, uh, for man or me, or as my son likes to say, for mom. Um, and then we have another J for Jesus. So um, the verse says that I am in my father, you are in me, and I am in you. So the very first thing we need to do is put Jesus inside of us. When we know that when we receive Jesus as our Lord, um, his spirit comes to live inside of us. So he is in us. But it also says that we are in him. So we we'll take our hot pink that is filled with Jesus and put it inside Jesus because it says that we live in him. And then Jesus says, I am in my father. So we take the big one. We put Jesus, who is filled with me, who is filled with Jesus, inside of God. Um, this is a picture of what that verse is telling us. I am in my Father, you are in me, and I am in you. I want you to think about where that little pink um, doll is inside of this stack of nesting dolls. This is our reality. This is how we function as believers in Christ. We are completely surrounded, protected, held, perfectly kept by our Father, by the love of our Father. Um, the gravity of this verse I think is more than even my, our, most of our minds can comprehend. Um, but I want to talk about five different so what's. Like, so what? What does it matter that this gives us a picture of that verse? Uh, the very first thing is that I am never alone. I sometimes can struggle with feeling alone or loneliness. And this verse tells me that I am never alone because wherever I go, this is my reality. Whether I'm all alone in my room at night or if I'm surrounded by people, my reality is that I am held and kept and secure and hidden inside of God's love for me. I am never alone. One of my very favorite verses is Deuteronomy 31, eight, and it says, um, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. You know, our feelings do not determine truth. God's word determines truth. So oftentimes I have to remind myself of truth. Like even though I feel alone, I know that this is my reality. I am never alone. You're with me. You will never fail me. You will never forsake me. So that's number one. Number two is that I can never be separated from God's love. I can never be separated. Once we have been sealed in this reality, once we become, we become believers, this can never come apart. Like God won't like pop off the top and we're out. It will never happen. We can never be separated from his love. And we know that there's a verse that says this, and now we have a picture of what that looks like. Um, Romans 8, 39, uh, through, uh, 38 through 39 says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present or the future or any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything in all of creation will be able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Once we are here, once we are in this, we can never be separated from God's love. We can never be separated. What security do we have in that? What security could we draw from in that? Instead of holding out our cup and looking for love in all the wrong places, we can rest here in the love of our Father. Uh, the third thing is that I have a new hiding place now. Colossians 3, 3 says that your life is now hidden with Christ in God. It's another verse that describes this, right? We are hidden with Christ in God. That is our new hiding place. And you think, why do we really need a hiding place? Um, I don't know about you, but oftentimes I need like a safe refuge that I can go to and rest in, and that is Jesus. This is a picture of our safe, safe refuge in him. Also, I think about the times when I sin um, and I want to run to uh, shame and hide in shame because of the guilt or whatever of my sin. And God said, no, I've given you a new hiding place in Jesus. And you rest there and you sit in his grace. And there's no more performing and there's no more trying to achieve love. You are hidden and protected 
constantly secure and held in my perfect love for you. I have a new hiding place and I like that. Um, number four is um, that nothing can get to me without going through the filter of my good and loving God. I want you to think about this. Think again about where the pink one is in here. Nothing can touch our lives if it hasn't first gone through God and then Jesus before it gets to us. And when it gets to us, it finds us filled with Jesus. What do we have to fear? Anything that comes through our life has been filtered through a good and loving God. Anything that comes into my life, I know that he has said, this is going to bring me glory or it's going to make you more like me. Otherwise, he would have protected me from it. This is a shell. It's a protective covering that we have in the Lord. This is our reality. I never have to worry about the things that come into my life because I am perfectly held by God. Which leads me to number five, which is I can live without fear. And this is a huge one. When I think about uh, 1, John, verse, uh, 1 John 4, um, it tells us that God is love. And then it says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Maybe we are um, held by fear because we don't get this quite yet. We don't get how perfectly held we are and the love of our Father. We don't get it yet. Because if we did, we wouldn't fear. And I think a lot of times for me, it's that I at fear because I imagine myself removed from this. I, it's like I've forgotten that I have this protective covering over me always in God, in Christ. What do I have to fear? Either that or I don't really know that I can trust the hands that are holding me. If we really knew and trusted in the character of God, the one who holds us perfectly, what do we have to fear? I love that Paul in Ephesians 3 says that we can pray to have a better understanding of this love. We can pray and ask God to open our minds to the truth of this verse, that we are in him and he is in the Father and this is our reality and everywhere we go, we are held, protected, surrounded and kept by a good and loving God. I don't know about you, but I wanna understand the gravity of this more. I wanna understand the truth of this verse more. Um, there is actually a part two to this, um, but I'm gonna wait for another day to um, give you the nesting doll part two. So I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.